Hello and welcome to worship with Spirit of Joy Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We welcome you wherever you are today uh, as we together celebrate Pentecost Sunday. This is the day in the church year when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit and is in many ways the birthday of the church. We also recognize the many forms of suffering in our world right now on this day. As we record, it is Friday afternoon, and our sisters and brothers, our siblings in South Minneapolis face deep turmoil over the murder of George Floyd. And siblings around the world are suffering from COVID-19, continue to suffer. And so in these ways, we together plead for the Holy Spirit to give breath again to our world. We pray that this worship will be a form of refreshment and renewal and breath new life for you. So welcome to worship. We worship together as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join now in confession, trusting in the word of life given in baptism. We're gathered together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us now draw near to the heart of God, together confessing our sin. Almighty God, we confess that we have often refused the gift of your Spirit. Content in our dimness, we shrink from your light. Comfortable in our coolness, we withdraw from your fire. We would be moved, but carefully. We would feel, but mildly. We would see your face, but dimly. Forgive us for begrudging the coming of your spirit, or for accepting your fire only to smother it selfishly. Forgive us and visit us again. We pray now in Jesus' name, not for warm thoughts, but for burning hearts. Dear siblings in Christ, hear this promise that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, and God raised him up from death to life so that we too might walk in newness of life. By the mercy of Almighty God, your sins are forgiven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, God will keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Good morning, boys and girls of Spirit of Joy. Welcome to worship, uh, to the children's message and worship today. Um, today, you've probably already heard, is a special day in the, in the year of the church, the life of the church. It's called the day of Pentecost. And today we celebrate God's, Jesus sending the Holy Spirit to us. We've been talking about that promise for the last couple of weeks. Because it was such a special day for the church, the early church, some people call it the birthday of the church. So maybe you can have a little cupcake or some cake today and light a candle and sing happy birthday to the church. You'll notice behind me we have red banners up and I'm wearing a little red today. And we're gonna talk about why the red color um, when I read the story in just a minute. My grandson, Gabriel, is almost three years old, and he has had so much fun at our house playing with his daddy's old superhero figures, and I brought three of them today to show you. Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, and The Flash. And just to remind you of their superpowers, um, The Flash is super, super fast, really, really fast. Wonder Woman is super, super strong. And Spider-Man, we know, can stick to almost anything. And he's also very, very smart. I think these guys are smart too. But Spider-Man is an inventor and can create things and fly through the air. Really fun, superpowers. Of course, we know that their superpowers are kind of pretend. But in today's story, I want you to listen and see if you can hear some superpowers that the Holy Spirit gave to Jesus' followers. And today's story is called The Holy Spirit on page 502 in this Bible. Jesus' disciples were celebrating a festival called Pentecost when suddenly a strong wind blew through the house and everyone's hair got lifted up and there was an amazing noise. They looked at each other it looked like each disciple had a flame of fire touching him on their heads, but no one was burned. The Holy Spirit had come just as Jesus promised. The disciples began to speak in different languages, languages they'd never learned before. And stranger yet, they could understand what they were saying to each other. Then Peter stood up. I want to tell you about Jesus. He reminded everyone what Jesus had taught them. He told them how Jesus died and lives again. And Peter said, it's time for us to begin a new life with God's spirit guiding us, Peter said. The disciples were excited to live differently, guided by God's spirit. And this was the very beginning of the Christian church, the church's birthday. So once again, the red colors that you see to remind us about the flames of fire um, that happened on Pentecost. And what superpower did you hear? What did the Holy Spirit give superpower to those, those Jesus followers? Well, one thing was that they spoke in those languages. Wasn't that amazing? And everyone that was in that big crowd could understand the good news about Jesus because they heard it in their own language. Jesus also gives us a superpower to share these stories with others, to share God's love with others. So I hope you'll use your superpowers given to you by the Holy Spirit today to love one another, to love God, and to share God's stories. Happy Pentecost to you. And all God's children said, Amen. The Gospel reading this morning is from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. The risen Jesus appears to his disciples, offering them a benediction, a commission, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked, for the fear of Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the, the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. 
Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, then they, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins, they are retained. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The lesson for the day of Pentecost is from the second chapter of Acts, starting at verse 1. John has a different version of Pentecost, or the pouring, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which you heard uh, Anna read for us. This comes to us from, again, Luke, uh, the Gospel of Luke, part 2, the sequel. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability." Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you this day from God our Creator, from Jesus our risen Lord and Savior. And from the mighty wind who is the Holy Spirit poured out on us and in us. The story of Pentecost, Luke's version, as you've just heard, comes from the book of Acts. But the story actually begins back in Acts chapter 1. You heard it in last week's lesson. If you 
uh, worshiped with us in this way then. 40 days after Jesus' resurrection, the disciples ask him, before Jesus ascends into heaven, the disciples ask him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? In other words, Lord, is this the time when you will make Israel great again? like we were in the days of King David? Is this the time you will set us over and above the neighbors who are not like us, the neighbors who oppress us, those who don't uh, worship as we do? Jesus replied, it's not for you to know God's timetable for what God will do, but know this, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Now I suspect the disciples' ears perked up when they heard Jesus' promise of power. Some of them had been asking for or jockeying for power since almost since the beginning of their following Jesus. It's something they hoped for. We hear and read stories in some of the Gospels about that. I mentioned several weeks ago that I joined an online book club to try and make my way through uh, Tolstoy's epic novel, uh, War and Peace. The plan for the book club was to read a dozen or so pages a day, and by the time we got through this, this massive tome, that perhaps the pandemic would be almost over. Uh, it sounded like a good idea. I can make a humble brag and say I've finish the book, but perhaps a little bit too soon in terms of the pandemic. Well, just when you're ready to finally be done, to get through this very long story, Tolstoy launches into this epilogue that consists of a a philosophical discussion of, can you guess? Right, war and peace. And he specifically asks questions about power. Uh, The story is set during the Napoleonic Wars, the first 20 years of the 19th century, and he's asking, why do people do the things they do? What is the source of the force that moves people and nations? And then talking about these 20 years, uh, Tolstoy writes, during this period of time, millions of Christians in Western and Eastern Europe professing the law of love murder one another relentlessly. There's so much death. What does all this mean, he asks. What did all this proceed from? Tragically, the same Christian nations would do it all over again in four or five generations, in, uh, well, less than that, World War I and then in World War II. The promised and then poured out power at Pentecost is not power given to restore nations or to lift up the faithful over and against others. It's not given to us to practice the politics of derision and division in the name of God. The promised power of Pentecost is poured out to transcend divisions And that's clear from Luke's account of uh, the day of Pentecost, the outpouring of the Spirit. The mighty wind of the Holy Spirit blows Jesus' timid disciples into connections that were assumed impossible because of the barriers of language and class and gender and age. Jews from all over the region were gathered in Jerusalem for this Jewish festival of Pentecost And Luke tells us some of the places they came from. There were Greeks there and Arabs and Africans and Romans and Asians to name a few. And all who were gathered there began to hear coming from this upper room proclamations, conversations about God's mighty deeds of power because all those who were gathered in that space, though Galileans, We're speaking in the native languages of the people who were in Jerusalem for the festival. The Holy Spirit used those first praying disciples. They had been praying and waiting and praying and waiting for the promised Spirit to come. 
The Spirit uses these first praying disciples to communicate to the crowds. This newly born fledgling church is yours. Wherever you come from, whatever your story, whatever language you speak, you don't have to feel like outsiders in this new church. We speak your language too. Come in and feel at home. In Peter's sermon that follows, he proclaims how the Spirit transcends even more differences than language to accomplish God's purposes. And he quotes the prophet Joel declaring that when God's Spirit is poured out on all flesh, sons and daughters shall prophesy. There is not a, there's not a, a division because of gender here. He goes on to say that young men and old men shall dream dreams. There's not a division according to uh, age groups or age brackets. The church shall be intergenerational. All will share uh, God's mission. Slave and free. There's not a division according to classes. The spirit transcends differences. On this day of Pentecost 2020, of the Christian era, we are not yet gathered together again like those first disciples were not at least in one geographical location, and there's still a good reason for that. We hope that in a couple of weeks, if the right equipment arrives and the weather, um, the weather is right, we will worship outside of our walls in our parking lot. That's what we're working towards, but we will continue to offer worship in this way uh, no, matter, uh, no matter what else happens. The Holy Spirit's coming to us today and blowing God's transcending power through our congregation is not dependent upon where or how we are worshiping. In fact, I've been wondering this week if God might just use this troubled moment in the world, in the church, for another outburst of power. I wonder if the mighty wind of the Spirit might choose this time to redirect the church again into God's work of transcending differences. Preaching teacher Deborah Mumford asks, how many of our differences might be transcended now if we allowed the power of the Holy Spirit to reign in our lives? What miracles could the Holy Spirit perform in our churches and in our communities if we embraced her and invited her into our midst How many hearts and minds could the Holy Spirit transform if we prayed for the Holy Spirit to have her way in our neighborhoods and our cities and our nation? One of the pastors I follow on Twitter, Rich Viotas, tweeted this week, We need an outpouring of the Spirit that does more than tickle our private religious lust for more thrilling experiences. Sometimes... Uh, we seem to delegate the Spirit to helping us feel something, feel good about God. We need more than that, Viotas says. We need the kind of outpouring that empowers us with boldness to push back on the powers of sin and death. And so we pray on this day of Pentecost, come Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come and give us the courage and ability to transcend the many differences that divide us. Come, Holy Spirit, come and give us the language and skill to reset the priorities of a nation in which the poor and brown and black people are suffering and dying because of COVID-19 so much more frequently than the rest of us. Come, Holy Spirit, come and lead us out of the deeply entrenched racism that has resulted in the senseless killing of more black men, most recently Ahmed Arbery and George Floyd. Come, Holy Spirit, come and show us how to walk with those who are so sick and tired of denied dreams and those caught in the eruption of violence that has followed. Come, 
Holy Spirit, come and give us ears to hear our black brothers and sisters as we've never heard them before. Give us the language of reconciliation and justice to speak in ways we've never spoken before. Come, Holy Spirit, come and embolden us to refuse to be complacent or turn aside when leaders deceive or demean or divide us into polarized factions. Come, Holy Spirit, and move us to such bold and relentless action that some might wonder about the sources of our refreshment. The troubles of this present moment are so vast and so deep that this old story of a mighty wind and a roaring fire hardly seems relevant. But I believe maybe more than has been true for many years that this Pentecost story is especially relevant for precisely this time and this moment. This Pentecost feels like the church around the world is preparing for a kind of reset in the wake of the global pandemic. The temptation is to become so focused on what we'll do next with our personal lives or what what we'll do next in our congregation that we might overlook the bigger things that God wants to do as the holy wind blows in us and through us. Let us be guided by a Pentecost Identity. What Eugene Peterson says is the lived conviction that everything, absolutely everything in the scriptures is livable. Not just believable, not just true, but livable. Not just an idea or a noble cause, but livable in real life. Come Holy Spirit, come into our lives and into our church to transcend those death-dealing differences and breathe fresh life into us. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith together again this day of Pentecost using the words, the ancient words of the church from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Comfort the loved ones of George Floyd, who was murdered this past week in Minneapolis. Come near to all the victims of racism in our country. Protect and guide Pastor Ingrid Arnson Rasmussen, former Spirit of Joy partner and lead pastor of Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in South Minneapolis, which has become a medic station for protesters. Come near to all sister congregations in the Twin Cities, that they may be a beacon of your light and justice. Give each one of us a heart for equality and empathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks to all for all for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church that they will reveal your love for all. Work through the scientists who are seeking a a vaccination and a cure for COVID-19 as we desperately await the fruits of their labor. Work through the medical personnel who care for the persons with COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of creation in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere. Breathe energy into all things. Heal the whole creation with your breath. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort, especially Jean, Lisa, Tom, Jerry, Grayson, Matt, Jordan, Jana, Sheila, and Peter, Dennis, Marge, Amy, and all others we name with our voices or silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of celebration. We give thanks for Ray and Alice Christensen and for Mary and Dennis Tranberg who celebrate their 50th wedding anniversaries this week. Continue to bless them in their lives together and strengthen the bonds between them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of new life. We rejoice at the birth of Josephine Ruth Hamstra, who gave her, give her your breath as she adjusts to life in this outside world. Give joy and rest to her parents, Caitlin and Chris, and her sister, Eleanor. Guide the Hamstra family as they settle into life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of prayer. Give protection to all who labor to expand our house for prayer for all people. Stir creativity and enthusiasm in in us all as we imagine our future when we are safely together once again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place 
all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now invite you, invite all of us to continue our worship with a time of giving of our financial gifts and tithes. We, I hold these baskets as a symbolic reminder. Of course, these baskets will not be literally filled right now, but we do invite you to share your financial gifts by way of our website, spiritofjoy.net. There is a donate button, and you're welcome to give that way. If you are a ministry partner of Spirit of Joy and you give by way of check or cash and you have envelopes, please mail those or drop those by the church. We continue our worship in this way. A few announcements for you this morning, or maybe it's afternoon or evening as you are worshiping with us. As always, we are sharing some pictures with you to update you on our building expansion project because even as we grieve this time when we are not gathering physically together, it's not yet safe to do so within our space. We are looking forward to the day when we'll gather again, not just in this familiar place, but in our exciting new expanded space. If you're not in town and haven't driven by lately, you may not notice, have known there is a, an obvious new step being taken now. We've got new external walls on the outside, so uh, please drive by if you're in town and give a little honk. Also this week, we celebrate the 50th wedding anniversary, as you heard in the prayers, of Marianne Dennis Tramberg and Alice and Ray Christensen got a couple pictures for you of the Tranbergs, I believe, but if you know how to get in touch with those folks, please send them a note of congrats on this huge milestone. We give thanks for them and we join their families in celebrating their 50 years of married life together. Thanks to our ministry partners in town who have supported our ministry with Necessities for Neighbors, which is a ministry through which our neighbors receive necessary hygiene items for their homes, and we collected toilet paper and toothpaste and other such items in our space. They will be distributed next Sunday, the first Sunday in June. We have had plenty of volunteers sign up for that, so thanks for your support. We don't need any more volunteers for next Sunday. So this is just a word of thanks to all of you for participating directly or indirectly in that ministry. And finally, you may be watching this after it's already happened, so it's a note for you to know that on Sunday morning from 10 to 11, we will have or did have a Pentecost pinwheel parade, a way to safely and socially distantly celebrate this huge milestone in the church year, the Sunday of Pentecost. And more instructions will be coming or did come to you here we're operating in multiple verb tenses, uh, and that's just the way things are right now. But uh, thanks to any of you who are going to or did come to the parade. We now invite you to join in the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion with us from where you are. And so if you have not done so, I invite you to pause this video and go to your pantry or your kitchen and grab some bread in whatever form you may have it and some wine or juice to be for you with, along with the words that you'll speak to be for you the body and blood of Jesus Christ in your place. And now I invite you to join me in the words of the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And now on the screen you will see the words of institution, what we call the words of blessing, when we recall that night in which Jesus was betrayed, that first Lord's Supper that we remember together now. Those words will be there, and we invite you to speak them, either for yourself, if you are by yourself, or for everyone with you. And then the words of blessing at the sharing of the bread and the wine or the juice will also be on the screen. And again, if you are by yourself, those words are for you to receive. And if you are with others, you can say them to one another. May you know and trust 
what we believe to be true, which is that Jesus is present when these words are spoken and the elements are shared, the bread and the wine and the juice. So Jesus is present with you now. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We join together now in speaking the words that Jesus continues to teach us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm, May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.